Hey, welcome to the first installment of The Screen Door. This is just a casual discussion about film, music, uh, photography, literature, poetry. I'm going to mainly emphasize film and music just because those are the mediums that I'm personally closest to. But uh, what I'm hoping to do is occasionally bring in a guest for the areas that I'm not as equally versed on. I said I would occasionally have guests. It appears that I have two of them right now. I'm not sure. One is at my feet. And this is the other one. It's called The Screen Door because it was originally just going to be a uh, commentary about film, but my wife suggested that I broaden that so that it could be a wider, more varied interest. And uh, her feeling was that screening could still apply. This isn't going to be a series of reviews. It's not going to be a thumbs up, thumbs down sort of thing. So there will never be what you'd call a bad review because that's not really what I'm looking to do. There's plenty of movies that I hate. There's plenty of music I don't have any place for in my life. But it's that's not what I want to do here. What I want to do is to kind of bring to light things that have not been acknowledged as much because they've either been under the radar or maybe to uh, millennials there's some older films or some older music that is worth taking a second look at. So the first thing I would like to discuss is the film Amelie. And some of you may be saying, well, that's not exactly under the radar thing. And that's true in the sense that it was actually nominated for uh, a handful of awards, but it is hardly mainstream. For one thing, it is a foreign film. It's in French. It's subtitled, and it has a fairly healthy cult life. So if you're not familiar with this movie, I really urge you to check it out. The name Amelie refers to the main character, a young girl in Paris. Amelie is a perfect example of why Europeans and the British have an edge over Americans as far as filmmaking. There is more flavor to the meal. Something more emotionally connecting, in, in my opinion. You know, obviously, some of this is subjective. That's a topic we're going to take up someday. But there is something about Amelie, even if you just go at it from a visual angle that there's something more. This whole film is just loaded with small touches. Small touches, but they don't so much call attention to themselves. It's not a matter of the filmmaker showing off. It has the gift of being able to emotionally connect the viewer and the story. The photography is rich and dimensional throughout. Looking in on a local from the neighborhood, we see an artist in one window and in the next window some of his work. Three consecutive actions, all in one unbroken shot. How many times did they have to take this to time it out just so? Amelie reminds me very much of sidewalk art. If you're in an, a kind of artistic community or in a province of Paris, which is where this is some kind of a Parisian borough, I think, the effect of that is that it brings you into the movie. It helps you feel like you're there. Some subtle filters have been employed to very good effect. Sapia tone has become a popular thing in films, especially since The Godfather. It's a popular thing and it's effective and it's worthwhile, usually to imply a memory or something historically long ago. And in Amelie, the filters are used in a much more subtle way. They add a kind of definition, kind of a hardness to things like clouds and tree lines. And it isn't 
so much to brighten them as it is to intensify them. A standout scene in my mind regarding this is in the cemetery where Amelie and her father are placing a gnome on his wife's grave. And it's a very blustery day and I can almost feel the wind blowing through my hair. There are many shots in this film that resemble a painting. They're just really carefully composed, even though in some cases, like the very opening shot of the film, this was not set up. It was discovered. Somebody had an eye for something that was composed very much like a painting. So several of the shots in the movie are like this, including some of the interiors. Just the general sense of composition on the part of the director of photography alone is satisfying in the film. There is a story arc with a beginning and a resolution at the end, but most movies can be seen as a sequence of events. Amelie is more like a series of intimate moments, and it's somehow sewn together like a patchwork quilt. So there is a totality to the experience. The story itself is very strong. It is kind of a seamless arc of these separate moments. Here are some observations about the film. See what, what you think about them. One is that the last time that I watched it, I noticed that in so many shots in the movie, it seems that Amelie is wearing red. It seems like that's her dominant color a lot of the time. It could be a skirt in one scene. It could be a sweater in another scene. I don't know if that is a matter of the filmmakers trying to allow her character to stand out. Every now and then, though, it's green. And I'm trying to figure out if there's a pattern. So I mentioned this to my wife, who, who is a dream interpreter. And... The movie has a very dreamlike quality. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm not loading more into this than it's due. I'm just making an observation. And my wife said, well, red tends to imply stop and green go. So I don't know whether that was intentional or not. This is one of those movies that's loose enough around the edges so it's open to a variety of interpretations. It has been pointed out before that it seems like all or maybe most of the characters in this film all are collecting something. It could be discarded photos from the, the, the little uh, photo booth. In one person's case, he is collecting his own comments about other people that he observes onto a tape recorder. Amelie herself continues to collect stones throughout the movie, and it's only in one, maybe two places where we find out what she does with them. She just skips them. Now, I actually have a question here. I am not clear what the purpose is of Amelie sending these videos to the man known as the glass man. I'm not sure what she intends, intends to be giving him, but whatever it is, it clearly had the desired effect. You can see how there was something resolved in him. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Please, please write in and, and let me know. So this brings it to a larger point. Amelie is clearly interfering with the lives of all these people that are around her, trying to enact good. But what is the common denominator here? I mean, like in some cases, she is trying to bring resolution or at least a moment of happiness, if not resolution, to these different people. In some cases, she's trying to enact justice, even though... It takes the form of revenge. So what is the common thing that she is trying to do? The one thing that I can see that seems to be a dominant 
feature to all this is that she is giving everyone a mystery, even the people she's trying to frustrate. She's either trying to build people up, or in a few cases, people who have built themselves up way too much, she's taking them down. But in, in nearly all these cases, it involves a mystery, something that the person has to try and unwind in order to understand. And in the cases of the people she's frustrating, I'm not sure they've ever come to the end of it. That may be her goal. But why a mystery? Why is a mystery to Amelie? Why is that a gift? I don't know for sure, but it brings to my mind a quote that I heard someone say a long time ago. Life is more interesting when you don't know which bush the rabbit is going to jump out from. Hey, I really hope to hear some feedback from you. Tell me if you hate this. You know, tell me if there's something more you would like to see. Uh, so, please get back to me. Thanks.